Welcome to Haxby Shed and part two of improvements to this vertical head on my Harrison mill. There's only two parts to this so this is like the final part. I want to address some comments that I had on part one. That's been out about three days now. Well the first comment was this boring head I was using with this tool here that I made just a bit of 3 high-speed steel, tool steel anyway, too much stick out. Well yes I know there was too much stick out but the reason it was like that was because this head was on this stand and this stand has two indexes here to fit the vertical slide on the mill so it allows me to position this in the right place but I couldn't move the head any further forward so that's why I got the stick out. Now then I could have cut it here and then separated this part and then I could have made a plate and screwed it back on but if I could get away with it I wasn't going to do that and in fact I think if you watch this video you can see I just about got away with it. You can still see a few uh, chatter marks on the bottom of the groove where the o-ring go goes but I think it's okay I decided it was good enough. Um, I got a comment though from Dean from Air Cave Shop and he said you could have put a bit of lead around this and I thought that was a really clever idea I'd not thought of that. Uh, Carl from Carl Wilson his channel where he's uh, renovating one of these he made a very good observation and that is there's grease here on this bottom bearing there's grease in here there's oil in the middle here and there's no actual oil seal separating the grease from the oil it relies on in this lower section something called a baffle sleeve which you've probably seen if you saw part one but there's no physical seal it's a kind of overlap arrangement and at the top here there's just something called a sealing plate but it's not a seal well here's the point if you pump too much grease into these I've forgotten where this grease point is on this one but it's here on the top one um, if you pump too much grease in the grease goes up through the middle of the sleeve and will get into this chamber here where the oil is and there was a lot of gunge in here and Carl quite rightly pointed out it was most likely grease where they'd overfilled these bearings now it occurs to me uh, this is quite a meaty piece here this bottom cover you could actually put a seal in there machine that out to fit an oil seal to fit around the spindle here uh, and then you would probably need to cut a hole in the battle sleeve drill a hole and the oil could run in if you didn't have any grease in here is what I'm saying you could just let it run in an oil bath instead and then probably you could turn this head much further over than the 45 degrees I think that it says in the manual you know maybe even to 90 depending on where the oil was settling uh, there's not a lot of oil in here the oil in this front part only settles about there and in the back part it's no more than a dip where the bottom gear there's two gears in here two gears where the bottom gear just goes into a kind of dip at the bottom that's all um, I had another comment can't remember the man's name now but he said rather than putting an o-ring in here he'd actually used a non-setting gasket sealer and then it never dripped again so you know that would have been much simpler wouldn't it <laughs> whatever it was just I got the idea in my mind and I wanted to put the o-ring in so anyway some quite useful comments thank you I hope you enjoy the video it's almost better with a bigger cut on honestly <laughs> Well I'm just measuring up to see what we've got. My dial says 1.6, a cut of 1.6 deep, but when I measure it with the calipers it's more like 1.3. But there's a 2.5 mil o-ring look. You know the signs are quite good, if we can keep this up it's going to work against all odds to be honest. I sped this up a little bit, maybe 20%, something like that.
Let's see what we've got then. Down in this corner. 1.75 up here. 1.79 maybe. Here. 1.71 maybe. I'm going to say maybe because I, it's a bit rough and ready way to measure this. Oh, that looked like more. What's that? Oh, 1.76. Right, we're into uh, judgment time really to decide just how much further to go. There has to be enough squash uh, to seal the oil, but because it's only three millimeters wide, I don't know. It's got to be able to squash sideways. Do you know, in a way, I'm quite happy with that. I'll just come off the camera and I'll do some fiddling and thinking. I've sacrificed this O-ring so I can slot that in like a bead there, can you see? And I've squished it up with this rule. And it kind of works, although I don't know. I think it's all right. The trouble is once I've got this off this table, I'll never ever set it up again. So, do you know, I might just scrape it round a few more times just to take some of the chatter off it. But otherwise I think we're pretty much done now. My microphone was off here, but you can see what I'm doing. After a bit of cleaning up, but I stuffed this here with a rag to make sure I didn't get any shavings into the gearbox there. That's the finished result. And I think that's going to do just fine. I don't know why I'm doing this, it doesn't help, does it? It's got plenty of side to side width on it, so it'll squash quite happily, I think. Well, the new seal has arrived. In the end, I got it from Bearing Revolution. Simply Bearings had them, but not quite the right size. The one I showed you on the phone was actually uh, rubber covered. This one's metal clad. I realized later that I needed a metal clad seal. And it was hard to find one. I spent probably an hour trying to locate one. There were enough with the inner and outer diameter correct, but the width was the issue. Uh, so this one is quarter of an inch, 0.25. This one's turned out to be 0.26, although it was described as 0.25. Several others were you know, 0.31, 0.37 and so on. Anyway, it was £7.50 delivered, so I can fit this now. There's a big difference. Uh, this one, can't show you easily, but the hole in there is much smaller. What I'm saying is that the rubber on this one has gone hard, and the rubber on this one, of course, is new, so it's soft. So, yep. Now with this, well, I've discovered something. Let me just turn it round. Do you remember me saying that there was a cutaway just there and I speculated that it was for an oil gallery or an oil return? Well, in fact, it is. And there's a couple of holes there and you can see that this wire drops right in and the oil returns. So it comes through this bearing and then returns. But looking at the manual, these holes are supposed to be at the bottom. Uh, that would be the bottom there. And they're obviously you know, shifted round by one of these holes. So I think that hasn't gone back on in the right place. Somebody's had this off in the past. And when you look at these witness marks here, you've got one there and one there. And what that is, the, the, the gear in the rear section um, will come up against that if the spindle isn't properly engaged with that int 30 stub that's on this head. And it'll chafe on here. So it's chafed in two places and that indicates to me that this has been shifted round. So it should be there, and instead it's been chafing here. 
So somebody's been in here before us, so this needs to be unscrewed and moved round by one whole position. So all six of those cap heads were the same size, same length. I don't know if this is on dowels or something. There is actually a hole there and a hole at this side here. And if this is round by one position, I'm just thinking that somebody's thought, well, those holes ought to go across there like that at 90. I can't see a reason why at the moment, but that might be the, have been their logic as to why they put it on the way they did. I can turn that, but it's not lifting off, but that's okay for what we want to do. So I think that goes there. And I think these holes here were probably to take a key of some kind. There's three holes for the oil. That one, that one, and one there. So that one's completely covered up and these two are partially covered up. So I don't know whether somebody just made a gasket for this. It doesn't look original, does it? So I'm just gonna cut it a bit to open up these holes. Well, in case you're interested, this seal says on it, CR13534 USA. Get it right this time. So I'm going to put a piece of paper or something around here before I put it on because this edge is very sharp. There's a little bit of play in that key, but it's not too bad. So once I've put this ring on, the back section, front section here, will be done. But one thing I have realised, looking at this other section here, which you can't see very well, sorry. When I look at this back section of the head, I can see here where my finger's pointing is the sight glass. And the centre of the sight glass lines up about there. Which means when you filled it with oil, the oil level is just below that spinner there. So if any oil is leaking from the front part of the head, the front section, and coming into this section, when this is stationary, it's just going to overflow into this cavity here. And I reckon that's what's been happening. Just to add a comment about this unit, you see there's a hole there and there's one at the other side opposite and I'd said maybe there were holes to fit some kind of key perhaps but I saw a very useful blog with photographs and the person pointed out that these holes are threaded and if you take one of the screws I think from the cap here it's the same thread so when you've got the six larger cap heads out you saw that I could turn this but I couldn't pull it out but actually if you put those screws in there and turn on those it extracts this unit as a complete bearing unit. So that's useful to know. Now, the person also said that he'd got some plastic spacers behind here in this joint to get the backlash right on these gears between this shaft and the vertical spindle shaft. Well, I don't see any plastic spacers there, but there are some ground rings and perhaps, you know, that's what they've used to get that black backlash right. I mean, it's, there's a tiny, tiny amount. It feels just right. The photographs on the blog also confirmed, yes, that these drain return holes for the oil do go at the bottom. Now, when the head is swiveled, they won't be at the bottom, obviously. But it doesn't matter, really, because the head will spend 99.9% .9 of its time in the vertical anyway. So that's reassuring to know. You wouldn't believe how many pairs of these gloves I get through. I do try to reuse them if I can. I'm going to get some better ones next time. Ugh. It swivels very smoothly with that O-ring in. Not that it matters. Not the easiest thing to line up, but made a lot easier by this. 
I'm going to go back to ISO 220 in here. In the winter, the machine was struggling to get going and I thought it was too thick, but I think it is the specified oil. But I've realized since then, when you fill it just to that point there, there's so little in here, and equally there's so little in this back box, that actually the drag must be very low, or relatively low. So we'll go back to the proper stuff. I've not been going long and it's already coming up that sight glass. This back section takes hardly any. I've already overfilled it. I'm having to drain some off it now. That's the excess look. The level was way above this and yet I only had to drain that much out. Well hopefully that's the end to the big oil leaks on this vertical milling head. Now other projects which I'll do in time will be to turn down the taper on this one inch arbor from 40 inch to 30 inch to fit this machine and also to make a new lead screw nut for this table. I'm not quite sure when but they'll need to be done. Well I hope that was useful for somebody and thanks for watching. I picked up a few bits at the auto jumble this morning. This Woodruff cutter, three quarters diameter, three sixteenths thick, three pounds. Plain shank, I'm planning to cut some T-slots with that. This three eighths reamer, taper, one pound. A one eighth BSP taper tap, it's slightly dull, but I think it'll be okay. Another pound. This 14 millimeter drill with a plain shank, three pounds presto, brand new. Quite often, if I'm not working on a machine, if I'm just, you know, working in the yard with my pistol drill, if I need to drill a hole for a half inch clearance, I have to drill it 12 and then file it out. So having a 14 is quite useful. Two slitting saws, one inch diameter bore hole uh, with a key, 164 thick, four inches across, two pounds each. And then this uh, O-ring, 2.8 millimeters, wide. Now I'm pleased to say I paid a pound for this. I thought it might fit that milling head. It doesn't. Great because long story. Uh, I ordered some cord. I thought it was a UK seller. Turned out to be China. So that was like four pounds fifty wasted. Well it will arrive eventually. So last night I ordered some more 2.5 millimeter cord. Four pound fifty genuine UK seller. That'll come this week, but this was a kind of long shot. I thought, well, for a pound, it might just fit. I'm very pleased to say that I haven't wasted £4.50. Um, anyway, that was just from this morning.